So I know you want to get out, so hang on, hang loose, let's go. Proverbs chapter number 31 and verse number 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. Father, it's a blessing to be in the house of God today. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We love you, Lord Jesus, because you first loved us. And I pray for the touch of God today. Without you, I'm nothing. So I ask you for the touch of heaven. And I pray, Lord, for every mother here today that you'd bless them and touch them and challenge them and encourage them and strengthen them. And just let your hand be upon them in a mighty way. We'll say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God add the riches of his blessings to his word. Well, I want to preach to you today upon priceless, priceless. A mother is priceless, right? You know, without a mother, you wouldn't be here today, and I wouldn't be here today. Neither would the gays or the lesbians be here either. Hey, that's all unnatural, isn't it? And yet they want to magnify that, and hey, if it wasn't for a mother, they couldn't be here. And so it is, and I'm glad for mothers because it's a great thing. Well... I picked up a little book uh, the other day, and it said, um, Outrageous Expectations. This is what uh, people expect when they get married of a woman. This man made this list out. I want a woman that loves children, that's hardworking, has the ability to listen and communicate, is poised, is a team player, good-looking, sexy, balanced, has the ability to keep things in perspective, enthusiastic, shows initiative, knows how to be a friend, patient, has religious convictions, determined and persistent, considerate of others, has self-control, <laughs> ambition, loyal, loves sports, loves music, loves to travel, good mentally, physically, and emotionally, in good condition like that, a sense of humor, alert, and the ability to be herself. Does any of you fit that bill? Got one that fits the bill. <laughs> You're a lucky man, Bert. You're a lucky man. <laughs> well, I'm glad in the book of Proverbs we have a woman like that because the Bible said, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. That word virtuous in this respect in this chapter means she's trustworthy. She's faithful. She's a woman of purity. She's a woman of industry. She's a woman that's honest. She's a woman that is unselfish. She's a woman of charity. She's a woman of good judgment. She's a woman of social grace. She's a woman of wisdom. She's a woman of kindness and a woman that fears God. That's what you find in Proverbs 31. So I'd say she fits a bill. Maybe goes way beyond the expectation that this young man had in finding the bride. Well, I want to preach to you a little while upon priceless. Mothers are priceless, really. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. It's far above diamonds. It's far above gold and those things and coral and all that. And so rubies back in that day were very precious. And so a virtuous woman, a woman who fears God, is a priceless woman. Well, let me just give you about ten things. And you could not; these are not the ten commandments, but they're ten things and Brother George said I always had a lot of points. Well, some preachers have three points and three points under them. And so that makes nine, ten, eleven, about almost twelve, don't it? And so let me just give you ten points right here right quickly. And first of all, she waits. Here is a priceless woman because she waits. What's she waiting on? Well, she's waiting on that baby to get here in nine months. She has to wait nine months for that baby to get here. Isn't that amazing? Now, you ladies been through that. It takes a lot of patience, and I know... I don't know if it's, if it's me, I'd say, let's get this baby here quick. <laughs> I'd, I'd say, let's punch a button and get that baby here, but you have to wait nine months. And then, you know, they're always waiting. They're always waiting. They're waiting on them to come to school, from school. They're waiting on them uh, to come back from a trip. They're waiting on them to come from war or somewhere else. And uh, I've told you several years back about this lady. I used to drive a school bus. And this lady, she always stood on the porch. She was not the mother. She was the grandmother. But she always stood on the porch. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if it's snowing. I don't care how cold it was, she was always staying on that porch. And when she saw the school bus coming, she'd holler for little, the little granddaughter to come, and that granddaughter come out of the house every evening at, at time to uh, take her home. When I drove that school bus to her house, there was that grandmother standing there waiting. And so that's the way a mother is. She's always waiting. That's priceless, isn't it? You think about that as a, that's something priceless, to have somebody that's looking and longing for that child to come home. Then I want to say number two, she's... Uh, she works. This is a woman 
She's priceless because she works. What if you had an old lazy woman that wanted to lay on the couch all the time and drink uh, Pepsis and eat moon pies and never did want to do nothing? All she wanted to do is watch television, talk on the phone, never did want to do nothing. Wouldn't that be awful to have a, a wife like that? Well, here's a woman that works. She works tirelessly. She works continuously. She works willing. The Bible said she works willing with her hands. She don't have to be forced. She don't have to uh, take a whip and drive her to do something. She's willing. She works willingly with her hands. And so isn't that a blessing? She washes. She irons. She cooks and cleans and all that. That's a full-time job. You know, Carolyn, sometimes she's went off for a week or two. In fact, she went to Arizona when my, well, I went out there, but I flew home. She stayed another month. And, you know, you think, boy, I'm going to have a lot of time. But time you, time you do all the things she's done, you don't have no time at all. I mean, you find out what a woman's got to do when you, you don't have her there to do it. And so, hey, if your wife hadn't left home a while, just send her off for about a week and see how it is. It's not what you thought it was because, hey, she works all the time, tirelessly, continuously, and uh, willingly. And so here is this woman. She's priceless because she works. And then number three, she waits. Well, that's the same word, but it's, I want to put it in a different sense. She serves. She's a servant in a sense. She serves. Well, what does she serve? She's always serving her children. She's always serving her children, right? That's the way mama was. I remember mama. I know Carolyn does the same thing. She's always serving her children, right? Serving them, waiting on them, doing things. But just don't wait on them too much. You know, some mothers spoil the kids because they do everything from make them kids get up and make them kids get up and make their bed, make the, clean up the room. Don't let them just leave the room unkept. You know, make them make up the beds. You know what? Uh, sometimes I get out of bed and don't do it, Flash, but. Uh, Hey, <laughs> me and Carol always said, whoever gets out of the bed last makes the bed. And you know, if you got a bed made up, it, it looks a whole lot better. The room, I mean, it don't look so bad, does it? You ever tried that? Or you leave your bed unmade all day long? Now, Tammy, she likes to sleep on top of the cover so she don't have to make up the bed. <laughs> I, I think Sandy likes to do that, too, when she comes out to the house. She likes to sleep on top so she won't have to make up the bed. But the last person out of the bed ought to make up the bed, right? If you're lazy and want to sleep, when you get up, make up the bed. And so this woman, she's a waiter. She waits on her children. She waits on her husband. And then, of course, she waits on others. She serves. She's a servant like Martha. Uh, we're serving. She's always serving. And so it's not a bad thing. That's priceless to have somebody that serves. And so here's a priceless one because she serves. Then I will say number four, she wrestles. She's priceless because she wrestles. What do you mean, wrestles? Well, she has to wrestle in prayer. You know that is wrestling with the principalities and powers. We have to wrestle. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You wrestle against principalities and powers. You know that devil don't want you to be successful. That devil don't want you to have a good home. That devil don't want you to have good kids. He don't want you to have kids that you can be proud of. And so you got to wrestle. You wrestle in prayer. And they said, oh, Suzanne Wesley, she spent at least a hour a day in prayer. With all the kids, she had about, a, she had 19 and all. All of them didn't live, but she had 19 kids and all. And she had time to read the Word of God. She had time to pray. She took that time out. And so here it is. She wrestles in prayer against the principalities and uh, powers of the devil. And then, of course, she's wrestling for the salvation of her kids. She's wrestling in prayer, praying for the salvation of her kids. I remember a, a preacher telling this story that, he used to go over to, uh, over to his buddy's house and spend the night. And he said over to his buddy's house, said his, that buddy's mother would come in and get on her knees and pray every night with them boys when they went to bed. And she'd pray for her boy. And she'd pray for her families. And she'd pray, she'd pray for that boy. Manly Beasley was his name. He said, none of my family was saved. He said, I'm the only one saved in my family. And he said, I attribute it to that mother praying for me. She prayed for me, and I believe a many, a many a mother has prayed their kids uh, through to salvation because she wrestled in prayer and prayed and prayed and prayed. Uh, I told you a little bit about uh, a Cyclone Max conversion last week, but I didn't tell you about this other conversion. I've told it two or three times, but this fellow was on TV, and he was telling a story about when he got converted. He's, I mean, he broke out of prison three times. He's as mean as a snake, and man, he is, he is in trouble all over again, and and finally, he got saved. He got saved. I mean, he <laughs> I can't go through all the story. wouldn't have time to give it all to you, but he got saved. And he said, they said, you'll never get out of prison. His mama told him, turn yourself in, turn yourself in. And so he went to prison, and they said, you'll never get out of all the things you've done. You broke out of prison three times. You robbed banks. You've done all this. You'll never get out of prison. 
He said, I got out after two and a half years. He said, I had a praying mama that prayed and prayed and prayed for me. He said, Mama, don't ever stop praying for those kids. Keep on praying and praying. You said, it don't do no good. Keep on praying because there's a God in heaven who hears and answers prayer. Keep on praying and praying and keep on ringing those prayer bells of heaven because one day God up in heaven will say, answer that prayer. He's got them bottled up and he'll say, pour out that prayer. Because I want to answer that prayer, and that's going to be a blessed day. Well, she is priceless because she wrestles. She wrestles in prayer and wrestles against principalities in prayer. Number five, she priceless because she weeps. She weeps. She shed tears of sorrow, tears of suffering, and tears of joy. You know, I, I, when my kids were born, they wouldn't let you stay in the room with, uh, you know, your, your wife. You didn't see your kids born when my kids born. And, of course, Tammy, when her, you know, she's having her babies. They said, you can go in the room. And I went in the room and stayed just a little bit. But when she started crying and squalling because she was hurting, but I had to get out of there. I couldn't stand that. And so there's tears of suffering, right? You ladies know. If you know what that is, wave your hand at me. Some of you know what that is, don't you? Tears, tears. She weeps. She's. Sheds tears of suffering. And then there's tears of sorrow. There's a woman on TV last week. I didn't hear all the story, but some of you may have. Her daughter got in trouble. I don't know what kind of trouble she's in, where she shot somebody, killed somebody, or what she did. But anyway, her mother was weeping profusely because of that daughter. And so there's tears of sorrow. Tears of sorrow because... Maybe the kids are not doing what they're supposed to do, not living like they're supposed to live. And that mother sheds those tears because she is given uh, to sorrow. And then there's tears of joy. Thank God for those tears of joy. Sometimes you're overwhelmed with joy. Uh, just overwhelmed with joy. God just blesses you and blesses you. And there's those tears of joy. She's priceless because of those tears because God sees those tears, don't he? God sees those tears, as that song says. He does see those tears, and God does care. It's like old Hezekiah when he turned his face to the wall. Isaiah said, set your house in order because you're going to die and not live. And he turned his face to the wall and began to pray and began to weep. God saw those tears, and he turned old Isaiah around and said, before he even got out of the court, out of the palace, he said, go back and tell Hezekiah I've added to his years 15 years. Hey, God sees those tears, don't he? He surely does. Then number six, right quick, here's a woman. She's priceless because she worships. Here's a woman that gives God the time that he, that he deserves. You know, we got to give God the time that he deserves. You're not put in this world to live for yourself. You're put in this world to honor the living God, to serve the living God. Give him the time. Give him time every day. Spend time with the word of God. Spend time in prayer every day. You'll be glad that you did. Here's a priceless woman because she goes to the house of God. She frequents the house of God. She keeps her kids in church. How many kids can say I'm saved because mama took me to church and she kept me in Sunday school. She was there every Sunday. She, I believed God and trusted God and I'm in, I'm in the house of God today because mama took me to church, kept me in the house of God Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You say, that's too much religion for me. Hey, brother, that's, that's just being dedicated, amen. That's just being devoted to the Lord. I remember my brother married this little lady and uh, she, well, he went AWOL out of the service. He said he had amnesia. I, I think he possibly could have for some reason I'll not tell you. But anyway, uh, he married this lady, and, of course, she got him in church. She got him in church, and him getting in church, he got saved. And she wanted him to get saved, but he got too much religion. She said, you've got too much religion for me. He wanted to go to church every night. He wanted to pray all the time, read the Bible all the time, and she couldn't take it. Even though she was one that got him in church, he got too much religion for her. Can you get too much religion off? It's old time salvation. You can't, brother. The more you get, the more blessed you are. Somebody said you're too heavenly good to be an earthly good. No, you never get too heavenly good, brother, to be earthly good. The more heavenly minded you become, the more earthly good you can be, the more souls you can win. And so she spends time in the house of God. She worships. She worships with her kids. She works with her husband. And she worships. Yes, sir, me. Then I want to say uh, she's priceless because she watches. She watches. Number seven, she watches. In verse number 27, the Bible says, she looketh well to the ways of her household. She looks well to the ways of her household. She's watching. She watches her children grow up, don't she? Isn't that a blessing to watch your children grow up? You know, some mothers have the, 
great job of raising kids that never grew up. They have some kind of problem, and they never grew up, and they have to treat them like a baby all the days of their life. But isn't it the joy when you see those kids grow up, and you see them as a little baby, you see them growing, you see them learning, all that. That's a blessing, then that you watch them grow up, and that's a blessing. Then you watch them as they leave their nest, and watch them as they get a wife or a husband, watch them as they have kids, and so on and so on, and so that's a blessing. She watches, and then she watches her tongue. <laughs> hey, because the Bible said in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's not bitter, she's not hateful, she's not cantankerous. She is a woman of kind words. She's got a kind word in her tongue is the law of kindness. I think, I think she watches her attitude. I think here's a woman that watches her attitude, a, a priceless woman, a godly woman watches her attitude. Hey, your attitude goes a long way, right? She watches her actions, what she does, because somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching you. Somebody, especially those little kids, are watching. You know what? Don't teach your kids to lie. Is your mama home? No, she's in the shower. <laughs> No, she's in bed. She's hiding around the corner. But they've told the kids to lie about it. You know what they're doing? They're teaching the kids to lie, right? They ought to say, Mama's busy. She can't come to the door or whatever. You know, don't tell a lie. But anyway, she watches her actions. She watches her appearance. Hey, any old barn looks good with a little paint on it, don't it? Hey, you don't have to look like you stuck your finger in a, in a socket. No, every hair sticking straight out. Hey, you dress up to go out in public, right? Dress up for your husband once in a while. Don't drag around no house coat all day looking like an old bag or something, you know. I mean, Miss Pilkinson, she's done, gone to heaven, but I used to go down and visit her when I first came to Zion. I mean, she looked like she was ready to go to a ball every day. This woman was... I think she was 95 or 96 years old when she died. Every day. I mean, you go down there, she was dressed up, had her hair fixed, had the night dress on, had a rouge and uh, lipstick on. She wasn't going nowhere. She going to sit around the house all day. But she was all dressed up. And I told Carolyn, I said, Carolyn, you need to come down and see that. You need to go down with me one day and visit this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I said, boy. <laughs> Well, it's not what you think. <laughs> but anyway, I took her down there, and, and uh, Carolyn was telling Miss Pilkin, you know, about me talking about how dressed up she was and how nice she looked. And Miss Pilkin, now she's eight in her 80s, and she said, you're not a jealous woman, are you? <laughs> hey, she watches her appearance. She watches her appearance. Isn't that a blessing? And then, of course, she watches over those kids with, Moral teaching, with social teaching and physical teaching and practical teaching. Hey, your mama told you to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, right? She told you to respect your elders, right? And I hope you respect her. The Bible said honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the earth, that it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you? Honor your father and mother. If your mother's still alive, honor her. Speak well of her. Don't say the old woman, the old bag, or the old man. That's dishonoring your parents. I mean, if you said those words, ask God to forgive you right now and say, God, by the help of God, I'll never say those words again. She's watching, she's watching, she's priceless because she's watching. Then I want to say number eight, she's walking, she walks, she walks with the Lord. She walks with the children because she spends time with the kids. You know, that's one thing kids want. They want, they, you know, you take a lot of, Kids, they've been handed some, you know, they go to the parents and want to spend a little time with, here's $100, go do what you want to do. Or here's the car keys, go do what you want to do. They don't have time to spend with them. Won't, they really want to spend some time with you. So she walks with those kids. She spends some time with them. Spend time with those kids, and they'll always remember that. Their stories, that's to that very effect. The times I remember, they said, was the time I spent with Mama or with Daddy. So spend time with those kids. Pass on some great principles and great truths with them. Then I want to say number nine, she warns, she warns. In verse number three, she warns. And you know who's writing this? You know who's writing this? 
Solomon. Solomon is writing this. And maybe the woman he's talking about is Mother Bathsheba. Maybe that's the woman he's talking about. And she's warning him about women. Be careful about women. Young man, be careful about strange women, lewd women. They want you to go down the wrong path. They want to take you down, 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 down. They don't want to lift you up, up, up. Hey, you know, a lot of, a lot of young men, they want them wild women. They want them women to do anything and everything. And, hey, they're looking for wild women. Be careful about those women. Solomon, be careful about those women. Was Solomon careful about them? No. He had 300 wives and 700 concubines. He sure wasn't. He didn't, didn't take that advice, did he? Many of a person, many of a kid has never taken mama's advice. And if you take mama's advice, you probably wouldn't be in the trouble that you're in. Then she warns about wine. She warns about wine. She says it's not for, you know, kings to drink wine. And a strong drink. It's not for princes to drink strong drink. Lest they drink and forget law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. So she's warning about wine. Could I warn you a little bit about wine if I got a few minutes to give you this? The Bible said, Proverbs 21, wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. Oh, yes, whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. If you're deceived by alcohol or strong drink or wine, the Bible said you're not wise, you're not wise, you're not wise. Hey, wisdom is making the highest, noblest choice there is. And then the Bible said, that he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. If you love to drink wine, you're not going to be rich. You're going to spend all of your money. A lot of men go to the booze hall and they drink it up every payday and they go home with no money to buy the groceries or do anything. Many a man's broken his wife's heart and his kid's heart with strong drink and wine and those things. This is what Proverbs 23 says. Who hath woes? Boy, who's got trouble? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babblings? Who hath wounds without a cause? Who hath redness of eyes? Who fits the bill? Who has all these things? Six things, he says. Who's got all these things? They that tarry long in the wine, they that go to six, seek mixed drink. Look not up thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth this color in the cup, when it moveth upright at last, at last. Boy, it feels good, I guess. I don't know. Never been a drinker, never got drunk, never been drunk in my life. From booze, maybe from, from something else. When I was out there on the ocean, I felt drunk. You know, I, my, you know, my equilibrium was out of whack. And boy, I just stayed around there. But I've never been drunk. I've never been a drinker. Not a wine. But thank God. God's kept me from that. I could have been. But God saved me from that. At last, it biteth like a serpent. Who wants to get by, bit by a serpent? Anybody here like to get bit by a serpent? It stinging like a natter. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Thy heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shall be as a that life down in the midst of the sea. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd want to lay down in the midst of the sea. In fact, I heard it just this past week. A couple disappeared on uh, one of the carnival cruises. I think somebody's trying to shut that crowd down, don't you? But anyway, they disappeared out in the middle of the ocean. There's no way to find somebody out in the middle of the ocean like that. And so the Bible said he's like the one that lays down in the midst of the sea or he that lieth on the top of a mast. Here's the mask up here, that old ship. It's going like this. Off you go, right in the middle of the ocean. They have stricken me, the Bible says, and thou says I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. You beat him up, and he don't even feel it. Why, he's a drunk, he can't feel it. When shall I awake? I will seek it again. He's addicted. He's an alcoholic, isn't he? The Bible says again, Woe to them that rise early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink that continue until night, until wine inflame them. Man, it sets them on fire. Isaiah 20, 28, 28, Isaiah 28, they have erred through wine and through strong drink. They are out of the way. So she warns this young man. She warns, and I believe every mother does that, don't you? Mama did me that way. Carolyn did our kids that way. She's priceless, priceless, mother's priceless. Oh, my, isn't that something? I want you to notice number 10, she wins, she wins. She's a winner. The old song says, I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay. So she's a winner here and she's a winner over yonder. She wins because of her praise. Her home, her family praises her. Her children arise and call her blessed. And uh, not only so, but her husband, he praiseth her. 
I should have saved this, I guess. I should have saved this for Father's Day, but I may even forget it before Father's Day, so I'll tell it to you again, or today. It was on the, on the news, on, on some program yesterday I heard it. Talking about George Bush Sr. Anybody remember George Bush Sr.? He used to be the president, right? George Bush Sr., he had a lot to brag about and stick out his chest because he's the president. He had a son that was a president. He you know, had two sons. One of them, both of them was governors, and then one of them turned out to be a president. And they asked him about his greatest achievement. You know what he said? My kids come home to see me. What a treasure. What an accomplishment. Your kids come home to see you. It's sad when mothers don't have their kids to come home and see them. That's sad. Oh, son or daughter, if you're in that fix, make tracks home to see mom and see daddy. Her children, they praise her, and her husband, they, he praises her. You know, I'd rather have my kids to say something good about me as anybody else, hadn't you? Because they know you better than anybody else. Because you were raised, I mean, you, you was raised by them, you know, or you raised them, you know. And so you, you'd just rather have them say something good about you as anybody else. If they say something bad about you, that's bad. And then, of course, she's got a prize. She's got her pay. She wins. She's priceless because as it was Moses, you know, little Moses hitting the bulrushes. And Jochebed, you know, told Miriam, go down and watch him. And here comes the king's daughter down. And, of course, the little baby's crying. And she runs over and said, well, look at here. And she opens that ark and there's little Moses. Somebody said, an angel pinched him about the time that she opened that box and said, man, them little tears got a hold of that woman's heart. And she says, and Miriam runs up and said, would you like one of them Hebrew women to take care of this little baby? And she goes home and gets Jochebed, Moses' mother. Take him and raise him for me and I'll pay you for it. Mamas, I believe that's what God is saying Raise this child for me, and I'll pay you one day in a by and by. There's a crown, and you can win it. There's joys unspeakable. There's a home one day you'll be glad when you get to the city. The Bible said, who can find a virtuous woman for her prize is far above ruby. She's priceless. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm just going to open the altar. Say somebody here today, some mother, some, even some man, some child. You say, preacher, I need to hit those altars. I just need to talk to God. I just, I've got some things I need to talk to the Lord about. Maybe you've got confessions you need to make. Maybe you've got a, uh, you know, surrenders that you need to make to the Lord. Just slip around these altars and say, Lord, that's me. I just want to talk to you. I just want to pour out my heart to you. Maybe I just want to thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me and for my family. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to say hallelujah and bless your name. I just want to come around here and say, Lord, I want to honor you today on this Mother's Day for what you've done. Priceless, priceless, priceless. Who can find a virtuous woman for her prizes far above rubies? Don't be ashamed to come to these altars if God's tugging at your heart, nudging you to do so. Just feel free as free can be. You say, what will anybody think? They won't think nothing but good. They'll be glad that you minded the Lord. Just mind the Lord. That's all I want you to do. Just mind God. Father in heaven, I've given them what you gave me. And I pray that it'll be a blessing, especially to these mothers. May it challenge every heart and every life. Thank you, God, for everything you've done, what you're going to do in the days to come. Thank you for good, godly mothers. Lord, if there's one mother in this place today that's not saved, may this be the day she get up out of that seat, make her way down here in the front and surrender it all to Christ. Say, Lord, here I am. I surrender it all. I give it all to Jesus. Lord, I give it all to you. I pray have your way right now in this invitation. Amen.